Welcome to Dateline Health. This is Fred Lippman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. And every couple of years we have on one of my all-time favorite shows for you. Uh, we are a healthcare show and often we try to bring information to you that is very technical, very scientific. But this too is technical and scientific. It's the love of human beings and the ability of pets to help human beings cope with many things. So let me introduce uh, the people who are in front of me from the Humane Society of Broward County. And they are part of the uh, Animal Assisted Therapy Program. And in front of me, we have, actually we have four guests here today. How about that? In front of me, we have Susan Cleveland, who is a volunteer and a beautiful, beautiful pet, Blaze. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. How long has Blaze been part of the program? He's been doing pet therapy here for a little over five years. Really? And now we have the uh, so-called manager, I call the director. <laughs> We don't want to call you a manager. They can call you a manager. I'll call you the director. The director of the Animal Assisted Therapy Program at the wonderful Humane Society of Broward County, Marnie Bellavia. Marnie, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're excited to be and here And we morning. have wonderful Sydney. Sydney is a new dog being, well, tell the people. Tell, tell us about Sydney. Sydney is, yes, she is a new dog. I've had her for about three years. She's currently in training to become a therapy dog. Um, she is five years old. She still has a few things that she's a little bit unsure of, so we're working on that. She's really good with her obedience. Her um, social skills are getting much better. So, um, you know, maybe one day we'll have a therapy dog on our hands. Right now she does a lot of presentations with me. She does TV interviews. We get her out there really trying to advocate the Humane Society of Broward County, um, adopting uh, a pet from our shelter, pet overpopulation, spay and neuter spaying and neutering your animals. So she's, she's my PR dog for right now. Let, let's tell the folks because, uh, you know, we, we've had the privilege of having you on twice before. Uh, one of our shows was an award-winning show, an international award-winning show. We're very proud of that. But I'm very proud of the fact that uh, we have such a magnificent humane society here in Broward County. And uh, this pet therapy or the pet assisted therapy program uh, is something special. So explain to the viewers what the actual program is and what you do. Sure. Our animal assisted therapy program, we have diff several different things that we do in that program. We have a um, section of the program where people will go into adult facilities, senior facilities, nursing homes, and the pet and the volunteer will go and do meet and greets or also help with maybe um, rehabilitation if somebody is rehabilitating. Um, and they provide, obviously, unconditional love and affection. We um, also have a Wags and Tails reading program whereby the animal and the volunteer go in and they help children that are having reading difficulties become better readers. We have a full-on education program where we go into all the schools in Broward County and we teach children about pet care and um, safety. We teach them about pet overpopulation. Um, we focus mainly on teaching kids, you know, all things about animals and what a huge responsibility it is to have an animal. Um, because a lot of times, you know, the children are begging their parents to have animals and they don't really realize what a big, tremendous responsibility it is to have an animal. So we do a lot of, um, a lot of presentations in the schools really focusing on teaching children about animals, how to be safe around them, and pet overpopulation for spaying and neutering. Um, but our animal assisted therapy program, like I said, it has different levels. So depending on where your dog is, in the, in the skill set would really define where they would be in the therapy world. So we have some dogs that are education dogs that go into the schools and work with kids. Then we have our wags and tails dogs. And then we have our fully assessed um, animal assisted therapy dogs like Blaze that go into different facilities and organizations and work with varying different degrees of, um, it could be mental illness, physical illness, or even normal functioning people. Let's get to that issue. Uh, Susan, may I call you Susan? Yes. 
because I, I think that the, the viewers uh, particularly, there were two issues, and I want to get back to wags and tails in, in a second, but uh, there were two issues that they hit upon in the, the shows that we did previously. Dominantly, it was the, the therapy issue, and I know that Blaze is a therapy dog. So let's talk about you know, what your actions are, how, how, what you do, where you go, things of that nature. We actually go to a Center for the Treatment of Eating Disorders, mm -hmm. and those, it's, it's all ladies, and those particular women are living away from home. Most of them have pets that they're living away from, usually for a minimum of a month. So in that particular facility, all we do is go and let them play with my dog, let them be with the dog, let them not have to be in a therapy session or dealing with an issue. They just get to play with my dog. In other situations, we may have someone who is uh, rehabilitating brush the dog because that is a, a motion that they need to practice. But when we go to the, the center we go to, it's mostly they just get to play with my dog and they have the best time at it. Well, also, and again, I, 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 it might not be Blaze's responsibility through you, but of course, we've, we've talked about the assisted therapy uh, use of these wonderful, beautiful animals to, uh, in areas when people have extreme uh, pain, morbidity. Uh, they're in very dire situations, everything from hospice to cancer care to uh, post-surgical care, post-shock care, traumatic care, and I know how wonderful these dogs have been in assisting the individuals, the human species, uh, to become uh, more credible relative to their fight to get better. So can we talk a bit about that? Yes, I've seen uh, uh, mainly in uh, assisted living facilities We'll go in and the, the care workers will come up afterward and say, this person has not said one word in a month. And when I went in, all the, they talked my ear off about the horse they had when they were three or that they had ferrets when they were younger. And they talk to myself and my dog and they don't talk to their care workers. They don't say anything for a long time. And then when we come in, all of a sudden they're verbose. And the care workers are amazed at the difference that it makes just having an animal in the building. Ms. Bellavia, otherwise known as Marty, my friend, talk to me a bit about that because in our very first show we had a, if I'm not mistaken, we had a uh, golden lab here that was very involved with uh, uh, patients, particularly children who are cancer patients. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of that for a while. Sure. Um, we do have, like I said before, varying different degrees of, of where we send our animals into the program. And for people that are terminally ill or children, I think what we find is that you bring an animal into a situation where there is trauma or there is grave illness, and that animal, by and large, provides comfort and provides unconditional love and acceptance, and they don't really care that you're hooked up to an IV machine. They don't care that you're getting chemotherapy. They don't care you have no hair. Um, they don't care what your illness is. Animals don't judge you. They love you unconditionally. And for the people that are being visited it, that are sick, it's hard. It's a hard reality to know that I'm sick, I have cancer, or I have some type of illness, and I'm in a hospital, and I'm not leaving anytime soon. And they have this visit from the animal and that animal, at that moment in time that they're there, t kind of takes away all the pain that they're feeling. It makes them feel as though they're not really in that situation at that time. They can be the child that's just hanging out with the dog. They could be the person who is missing their pet that's home that gets a visit by a therapy dog. Um, it deinstitutionalizes where they are, having an animal brought in there. Um, for a lot of people, it provides peace of mind. You know, having, being in the presence of an animal, whatever animal it is, is, is very good on, on your stress levels. It helps to reduce your blood pressure, it lowers your cortisol levels, your heart rate, your heart rate steadies. Um, so there's been scientific data that suggests that people do live longer that have pets. And they live longer because they know their pets are dependent upon them. So their will to keep themselves healthy 
their will to exercise, their will to get better if they are ill, is that much greater when there's an animal involved? That's really, you know, amazing. Uh, like I said, the viewers responded dramatically to uh, the, uh, the comments that we had relative to this, just what you just said. Um, the, uh, the conditional, the, what is it, the unconditional love of these animals to uh, a person, uh, they don't make the decision, and I'm repeating what you're saying, they don't make a decision that someone is hooked up to an IV or that they, they don't have any hair or that uh, they, they're unable to walk or things of that nature. They just see that person, I believe, from the inside out. I don't, see, I don't think they see them more than just some facial expressions. That's my own personal opinion, folks. <laughs> but I, I, I am truly amazed when I see these uh, therapy dogs, or ther the animal-assisted therapy dogs, uh, work. And they are. They don't know they're working, but they are working. I, I think that they really know in my mind, what their job is. Do you agree with me? I mean, Absolutely. I, I mean, what, what do you see? Well, often, particularly with children, it's an absolutely amazing connection. He has a slightly different demeanor when we put the vest on and right. we go into the center. Right. He is, every time someone comes, we have a, a special room that we go in and everybody comes to see us. Right. When someone comes in the room, he runs to the door and he greets them and he says, hi, come on in, let's sit around and, and chat for a bit. And being there and able to have them talk, I always ask them, what kind of dog do you have? What kind of cats do you have? And being able to just talk and be in that situation really provides a relaxing atmosphere for them. And he responds to that and goes up to everybody and sniffs them. He loves to lick them and they just find that delightful. Let's talk about wags and tails. I, I think that that's such a dramatic program that you have, that you use these dogs for. You, you touched on it and actually touched on the elements of it, but I want to focus on it right now back with the folks here. I, I have said in a number of times that a lot of our children, unfortunately, when they get into school programs, dominantly the lower ages of school, uh, they are often because of I don't know what it is, uh, non-attentiveness, societal features or otherwise, they seem to be marked that they're, they're, they're hyperactive, they're, they're not smart, they're not paying attention, things of that nature. And often it has to do with things that they, the children don't have any control of. For example, I, I, one of my missions has been to try to get children to be screened, eye screened. Uh, obviously, they are screened, hearing screened early on, but I screen before they get into their elementary school or kindergarten areas because if not, they, they, you know, a child, how, they, how do children sit in a classroom? It's either by height or by alphabetical order or by social security number. And somebody might be sitting in the back of the room who cannot see the, the, the blackboard or, or even see the computer that's in front of them or whatever. And uh, these children, unfortunately, get stained early on. But I've seen the work of your wags and tails. And the reason I bring up the other issue is because I've seen children who are often marked and uh, sometimes ridiculed by the fact that they are, they, something happens, they're wearing hearing aids, they're wearing very dark, uh, large glasses, they look a little different, they may have a, 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 a birth anomaly, things of that nature. I, I've taken away your story, but go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, Marty, tell me. That's okay. No, you, you, you're correct. You hit it right on the head. Um, you know, our Wags and Tails program is a reading motivation program. So we work with children that are having reading issues, they're having literacy issues, and you know, we have found that some of them are true literacy issues. Some of them are true, I'm really not able to pronunciate or I'm not really able to, you know, articulate what, whatever it is that they're reading back. And those are learning, learning issues. And then there are others that are self-esteem issues. The child that wears the glasses, the child that has the braces, the child that has the speech impediment. Um, and what's beautiful about this program is that, again, having the dog builds confidence the dog is non-judgmental, so the dog could care less what you look like. Like you said, it was, it was perfect. 
I think dogs do see you from the inside out. I don't think they see the outside. I think they feel the inside. And um, when these dogs come in with these volunteers that are working with them, the child that may be a little bit more insecure feels more confident because they know the dog can't laugh at them. I mean, the dog may fall asleep while they're reading a book, but the dog isn't going to laugh at them. The dog is going to wag its tail. It's going to come and give it kisses. It's going to lay down next to it. Um, so the child feels that they're in a very safe place where they're not being criticized, they're not being judged, and then learning can be facilitated. What happens a lot, a lot of times in the classroom is that you've got the peer-to-peer -peer interaction going on. And if I don't feel confident about myself, well, how can I read in front of my peers? They're going to make fun of me, or if I wear glasses. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bullying that goes on. And children are being picked on for various different reasons. So if I'm not as good as the person sitting next to me, I feel insecure. Taking them into this program and doing this one-on-one -on -one type of therapy with the, with the reading program with the dogs really helps to kind of boost their confidence while helping them to become more literate. Yeah, and, and again, I, I don't want to overstate that when, in using the word bullying, it's, it's often, it's, it's what, what I would call verbal, uh, it's an adversarial condition that ends up in the classroom. Mm -hmm. It's the our wonderful teaching professionals don't don't go, don't you know bully a child or otherwise. But it, what happens is it's the it's the children. It's the, the one, children. Yeah. It's the children mm -hmm. that uh, look at the child who's wearing a hearing aid or has got right. these big glasses or you know can't hear out of one ear or can't do this or whatever. There, there are certain problems mm -hmm. that. Uh, they, when they start to focus in on the dog, mm -hmm. everything else sort of disappears. It's sort of paint by number mm -hmm. and everything looks pretty. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And, you know, there are, it is coming from the children to the children, the, the, the bullying, the, the name making, you know, making right. fun of and, and whatnot. But we have, the, the, the kids that are involved in the Wags and Tails program, they are regarded now as like the superstars. So the kids that weren't picked, maybe because they don't necessarily have the reading problem, or maybe they're just not in that set right now that we're you know, taking, they take a certain amount of kids and then they take another certain amount of kids. Um, they look at those children differently. It's almost like when you see a person with a disability and you see a service dog. You don't see the disability, you see the dog. So a lot of times what happens is, now that those children are attached to the dog, mm -hmm. the kids that were making fun of them or bullying them or not having nice things to say about them have a completely different outlook on these children. Mm, I understand. Well, I see Blaze is getting a little, he's sitting there too quietly and he <laughs> yes. wants to get busy. Yes. But uh, I understand, I understand. I, he, I, you know, being a therapy dog, uh, He's very active. And yes. It's just sitting there. He's not doing his job. That's right. And he's not very happy not doing his job. That's what I'm reading. Yes. Blaze, that's what I hear <laughs> from you. Okay. And uh, what uh, what we have with Sydney is uh, Sydney again is uh, is learning. Uh, I know you've had Sydney for a while, but uh, now he's he's in learning. He's uh, he's in his baccalaureate program. He hasn't received <laughs> his degree yet. And uh, it, w things are going to work out, I know. Sydney, everything's going to work out. Uh, l let's just talk about uh, the Humane Society, if you don't mind, for a moment. Uh, I'm sure you don't mind. Uh, because, uh, again, we have a very unique situation here in Broward County in the fact that uh, the Humane Society of Broward County is, is, uh, is associated as one corporate unit uh, we have nothing against the, the, the entire, we love the entire uh, ASPCA world, but this is a, this is a, uh, a project of the people of, uh, uh, and to a good extent, a lot of wonderful human beings in Broward County. It's really a, um, a shining star in the field of, uh, of humane society. So talk a bit about the Broward uh, Humane Society. Sure. Um, our, our organization, the Humane Society of Broward County, as you said, is, a, is not affiliated with any other organization. We're not federally funded. We're not governmentally funded or state funded. It is all done by private sector. Um, we have a, a, such an amazing organization that 
I always encourage people to come down and check out our organization and see where your donations are going, see where your money is going. Um, everything from the animals that we have in our facility to the um, pet boutique. We have a beautiful pet boutique, lots of great things for animals and adults there. Um, we have foster care programs, we have a great adoption program, we have a cruelty investigator program. There's a lot of things that go on at our shelter that really make it top in the uh, United States. Um, our, um, our Humane Society is located at 2070 Griffin Road in Fort Lauderdale. And, um, and I point out it's just west of the railroad tracks at, at the station at the tri-rail station, just so that you wonder. It's just west of that. Go ahead. And I, I really encourage people to, you know, come down and, and look at the facility and maybe even think about volunteering. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities down at our Humane Society, not just in animal assisted therapy, because maybe you don't have an animal, but maybe you really want to give back to your community, you really love animals, the best thing you could do is um, support your local Humane Society. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities at our shelter with lots of fun things from adoptions to working in the pet boutique. I mean, what could be better than having somebody going home with their new dog and you're hooking them up with a brand new collar and leash and everyone's happy and excited? Um, there's lots of great opportunities there. And we have um, about 600 plus volunteers at our shelter. We rely solely on our volunteers. Um, our staff ratio is an under 100, so we have 600 plus volunteers, and they are really the heartbeat of our organization. They are the people that are the movers and shakers of our organization. Um, we rely on them heavily. So uh, we could always use more volunteers, and we would love to have people come down and check our Humane Society out and see if there is something of interest for them. Um, the other thing that people could do if they're interested in helping our Humane Society is by making not only monetary donations, but non-monetary donations. We're always in need of towels and bleach and paper towels and things that our shelter needs to run that when we go out and buy, cost money. Well, I'm glad you said that because there, there's, I, 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 I think my family is upset with the fact that every once in a while there are towels missing. <laughs> so I, uh, but I, uh, I, I, folks, they, they do need the, the towels so that they can put them in the, the dog pens or the cat pens so mm -hmm. that they don't have to be on a cold floor. And uh, it's, it's of great value. I mean, of course, they use them for other reasons. And there's uh, always need for donations. I know every group uh, is out there. I mean, we live in a very, a very driven, beneficent society. I think the American society is a giving society, and I. But uh, these these animals give without any cause and effect of saying, "Pay me." <laughs> they do because of their love uh, and uh, their connection with you. Uh, the viewing community is very significant. These are only two animals that are part of a compendium of, of animals that are involved in these multiple programs. And uh, I know that we don't usually ask for, you know, charitable donations or otherwise, but this is really a human donation. So if you can think of wanting to do something for the, the, uh, vir vir the virtual number, of, there are so many programs. You've got the, uh, the reading programs and you have the, the the animal assisted programs and just the Humane Society in general. And so if you have any desire to say, here's a few dollars and I want it to go to X or Y, I'm sure it'll get there, correct, mm -hmm. Moni? Absolutely. Right. Is there, isn't there a separate uh, fundraising element for your reading program? We, we do have a separate element um, where we go out and we look for grants right. to have our reading program funded every year right. um, because the volunteers do volunteer of their own free will, so we don't, we don't pay them. Right. Um, but there is training involved that they have to um, pay for. Mm -hmm. And we also buy supplies that we then go ahead and give to our volunteers that they can go ahead and give to the kids, such as stickers and bookmarks and safety books, so that they have a little something from us when they leave their session. And again, tell the folks what the name of that program is so that they-, if they Wags want. and Tails Reading Program. All right. We're in almost every library in Broward County. So if you've got children, grandchildren, if you have neighbors with kids, you know, definitely tell them to call their local branch, library branch. Um, we are in almost every one of them. And we're also in several schools in Broward County as well. 
No. Do we have the honor of having you here at the Alan Sherman Library on this campus? We, you know what? We don't. Well, we should. We because should. Because we are a, uh, we're a combined, we're a public-private entity. We're, this unit was created by the commissioners of Broward County and uh, Nova Southeastern University. We have a huge children readings program here. Oh, we so, definitely, definitely so, uh, have to get involved. Let's get you involved. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, uh, I am about to do something. The camera's gonna have to follow me now because I'm gonna look <laughs> for I'm gonna look for a little animal assistance here because I need some animal therapy. So I'm, I hope I don't walk out of my my little follow me now, guys. <laughs> hey Sydney, how are you? Say hi. 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 Hey Blaze, how you doing? Hi. How are you? Huh? Well, Blaze is used oh, to doing it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I okay. know. I know. You're wonderful. Well, <laughs> these are beautiful animals, folks. Uh, you gave me the opportunity to get out of my chair. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and again, uh, the reason we do this show is to bring some uh, thoughts to your mind that, uh, you know, we do show after show after show about uh, pain and suffering and, and issues related to wellness and prevention, and eye care and dental care, and et cetera, et cetera. And we've been privileged to be doing this now for you for over 11 years. But I always think that we need to talk about the health of the community and the wellness of our community. And to me, seeing these animals here and these wonderful people uh, that uh, are affiliated with the Humane Society of Broward County and particularly with the uh, Animal Assisted Therapy Program and Wags and Tails, uh, that uh, you ought to be proud. You ought to be proud of these folks, proud of these beautiful animals, and uh, their counterparts uh, at the Maine Society of Broward County. So hopefully uh, you don't mind me uh, reminding you that uh, a little help from uh, these wonderful animals uh, uh, is a, uh, a little tweak in your mind to the fact that uh, we need to be uh, not only kind to one another, but perhaps uh, seek a little uh, understanding of one another. Uh, because these animals uh, do that for us, and uh, we ought to be reminded of it. Anyway, pardon me for my little, uh, I, I guess, my little editorial comment, but uh, you know how close I am to you, the viewers, and I hope that you found uh, some uh, kindness and uh, love in this program, viewing these beautiful uh, animals here. So as we uh, come down to the last uh, 30 seconds of the show, I want to thank uh, Susan Cleveland for your volunteer work. And uh, I have to say a special thanks, if you don't mind, to Marnie Bellavia, who is the manager, I call it slash director, <laughs> they got to change that, uh, to, of the Animal Assisted Therapy Program, Marnie, at the Maine Society of Broward County. And thank you, Sydney. Thank you, that's good. <laughs> and thank you, Blaze. Thank you, okay. And folks, thank you. Uh, we all thank you. Remember, this is Dateline Health. We come to you from Nova Southeastern University and I hope we gave you a little feel of um, understanding humanity and uh, kindness. And remember, uh, say hi to your neighbor and be kind to all. This is Fred Lipman coming to you from Nova Southeastern University. Until next time, see ya. <laughs>